Hi friends, welcome to Edupedia World. I'll bring a series of lectures covering components from grade 10 physics and we'll see how exciting the world of physics is. Today's lecture will start with force and particularly in today's lecture we'll see what exactly force is, how do we define it and what are the effects that a force can produce. We'll see what a change of state is and what the change of dimension is as an effect of force. Okay, so let us start with force. What is force? All of you might have read about force by now. The most simplistic definition of force is uh, that it is a push or a pull or a pull on a body. So you provide a push to a body or you pull the body then it can be termed as a force applied on the body. Now the force applied to a body will produce certain effect on the body. What are those effects? It can be categorized under two heads. One is it can change the state of rest or of uniform motion of a body. Change the state of rest or uniform motion. uniform motion and secondly what it can do is that it can change the dimension of the body change the dimension of the body by changing the dimension I mean Changing the dimension, I mean that it can change the shape or the size of the body. So this can be categorized as shape or size of the body. Let us now discuss in further details the effects that the force can produce. As we have seen, the first effect that a force can produce is that it can change the state of rest or the uniform motion of a body. To understand what exactly the force is doing, we need to understand what the state of rest means and what uniform motion means. Let us imagine a box lying on a floor. Box lying on the floor this box will stay on the floor for infinitely long time if we do not apply any force on the box but now just suppose that you apply a force on the box from this direction then what will happen is that the box will start moving in this direction so before applying the force the body that is the box was in a state of rest and once we applied the force on the box it changed the state of rest and brought it into motion now let us imagine another example suppose there is a ball rolling on the floor in this direction this is a view from top so this whole plane is the floor and the ball is rolling at a constant speed in this straight direction. Now the ball will keep rolling on the floor with the same velocity on this frictionless floor in a straight line until and unless an external force is applied on the ball. And this behavior of the ball to retain its speed and the direction of motion 
is termed as the uniform motion of the body. So constant speed constant speed and direction. This is what uniform motion means. This is what uniform motion motion means. Now suppose that we apply a force on this already moving ball in the direction of the motion itself. Then what this particular force will do is that it will speed increase the speed of the ball but the direction of the ball will not change. But obviously because the constant speed is also a component of uniform motion, the body will no longer have uniform motion. Now imagine a different scenario in which we apply a force in any other direction than the direction of motion of the ball. Imagine that we apply a force in let's say this direction. Now what will happen is that this force will drift away the ball from its line of motion. So now the ball will start moving something like this. It will start moving in maybe this direction. So here what is happening maybe the speed is also changing but obviously the direction of the ball's motion is changing. So here the state of uniform motion of the body or the ball in this case is changing. So to sum up the first effect that the force can produce is that it can start a motion into a body which is already in rest or it can change the state of uniform motion of the body. Now that we have understood the first effect that the force can produce, let us see what this second effect means that is the change in dimension of the body. To understand what the change in dimension of the body means, let us take two examples. Suppose you have a spring attached to a wall. This is a spring attached to a wall. Any spring has a natural length of itself at which it likes to stay. For this spring that I have drawn, let the natural length will be this. But now imagine that you are applying a force on the spring like this like this if you apply a force on the spring. What this will do is that it will compress the spring. The spring will become smaller. So basically the dimension of the spring changes. So this is one of the effects that force can produce. It can change the dimension which can either be the shape or the size. Let us see another example. Imagine you have a balloon or a ball. Let's take a balloon and uh, you apply force from different directions. It does not matter. Force from different directions. What this will do is that it will ultimately compress the balloon into smaller size. Also it can change the shape too. Depends on how the force is applied. So this is another example where the dimension of the body is changed due to the applied force. Now you can see that it's okay we can change the state of rest or uniform motion. We can change the dimension. But isn't it possible that both the phenomena takes place together? Yeah, it's absolutely possible. In fact, in most of the cases, they go hand in hand. There might be some dimension change associated along with the change of state of rest or of uniform motion. 
so that can be a third uh, effect that the force can produce which is basically presence of both uh, effects now we have another term that is used to describe a body it's called a rigid body rigid body this is a exception what is exceptional about it the thing is that a rigid body does not change dimension it cannot change dimension that's the basic definition of a rigid body it does not change dimension so if a force is applied on a rigid body then the only effect that can be produced on it is that it can change the state of rest of the rigid body if it is in rest or it can change the state of uniform motion of the rigid body if it is already in motion I hope uh, we have a better picture of what a force is and what are the effects that a force can produce with this background in mind we will move to contact and non-contact force in our next lecture we'll see what they are what are the different types of force that fall under each category and uh, doing so we'll get a much clearer picture of what the force is and how does it work. Till then, goodbye. Have a great day.